this video we will have a look into types and especially typing when you are fetching data and normally you can use something full-blown like apollo for graphql or something like grpc but we will have a look into how we get type safety with a simple fetch so what exactly does it mean so one thing that we want to have is when we are fetching data using a simple fetch client we want to have the response automatically typed so when we look into the comments for example what we can see here is the actual typings of the response and when we look into for example these comments we would see okay there's data we already see what's in there there's more data and then that's actually an array and then when we would loop through those comments we would then also see the types here for example, there is a comment and there's a username. So all things like this. So that, that's what we actually want to achieve. But there's another thing that we also want to use, um, especially in the context of a headless CMS like Strapi. We want to have the type definitions of our backend headless components. So for example, if we have a hero component, we would like to have the actual uh, types for that component how it is structured in the strapi backend and then for that we can also use the types for example here we have the component schemas and then here is the content hero component and as we can see this component has a title a subtitle a title color and a background image so this types helps a lot if we want to map react components to the components that we have in our headless CMS because what we can do here is we actually see everything that we get and then also for the background image we would exactly see how we for example would get to the URL and whatever else so that's what we actually want to achieve but uh, in GraphQL this is an obvious task it's not so obvious if you are using a simple fetch client so there are a few key ingredients in how to make that work so one first of all is the documentation plugin in strapi so it doesn't really matter if you're using strapi or whatever but what you need to have is an open api specification so the open api specification is more or less maybe a bit like a graphql schema it's basically something that's in code documenting your api and the types of your api so for example in the in strapi what you get is a full documentation.json and this is the actual open api documentation so here you can see if you scroll down there are schemas and there for example at some point we would also see the let's look search for it the hero component that we saw earlier and there we also see the properties defined and then here we have the actual title and the subtitle and so on so this is generated automatically uh, from strapi so a lot of backend apis would be able to automatically generate those open api definitions so the next key ingredient that we want to use is open api typescript so this basically is a CLI command, um, also has a Node.js API, we are using the CLI command that takes a schema, so it doesn't have to be YAML, it can also be the JSON that we just saw, and then out of that it will create the TypeScript type definitions. And then having those type definitions, what we can do is we can use OpenAPI fetch so it's not fetch directly but it's a very very light wrapper around fetch more or less just allowing us to use those type definitions um, for our fetch so using a simple fetch wrapper is actually pretty nice because that allows you especially in the context of next.js to really directly use the fetch provided for next.js and don't have much more stuff around that which makes it often easier also to use so then another thing that you get um, if you have an open api documentation is a swagger ui so that's a bit like a graphql playground if you want this basically shows you a ui representation of the open api specs and gives you the ability to yeah just look around what actually 
these four endpoints and then you can also uh, try them out directly. Uh, so for example, this one is the slash comments and then you can try it. You can use all the different uh, query parameters um, that you have uh, for the API. And then once you execute, you will get the actual data back. As you can see here, there are two comments, one from Manuel and one from Sebastian. So that's another pretty cool benefit of the OpenAI documentation. Yeah, and you basically get that for free. So now let's have a look into what we are going to build with that. Um, so what we are going to build is a very, very simple uh, site. It's more or less consisting of a hero section with a background image, a title and a subtitle. And then there's another component that is uh, image and a text uh, component. And then what we also have is a comments section. So this will actually be a client side component that uses client side data fetching. And we will have a look into how we can use um, React Query uh, also in combination with the Open API Fetch to have everything typed as well. Okay, let's get into it. So what we what we do first is um, in our Stripe backend, whatever backend you have, we would see that there is in the extensions documentation folder the full documentation JSON. So this is basically what we have as our JSON open API specifications. And then the next thing that we need to do is we need from that documentation or specification, we need to generate our type uh, TypeScript type definitions. And we can do that using um, this uh, npm script that I've added. And this is basically just using the open API TypeScript CLI command. It forwards you to the, the path of the documentation. So in my case, the backend and the frontend are on the same level. You can, of course, also uh, have a URL here, so you don't need to rely on the open API specifications to be as a file somewhere near your source code. And then we output this Strapi type definitions to our API folder. And then afterwards, we just run an npm run test TS, which actually will fail, but we won't look into this. So there are some components here that I just copy and pasted. So this is not really a problem for our example. But what we have created now is in the front and source API folder, our Strapi uh, type definition. So this is basically the type definitions of our Strapi, Strapi API. And the cool thing is that it also shows you all the available path for the API not only, for example, the schemas of the uh, returns. And this is pretty nice because now if we look into our uh, Next.js page, so here we use the client directly. And this client is the open API fetch client. And as you would expect, you just create a client, you pass in the uh, path type definitions so that the client would know what path actually exists. And then just some basic stuff like the base URL, uh, some default headers. And then another thing that I did, which is related to Strapi, you can pass the query serializer. And since in Strapi, it's recommended to use QS as the serializer for get, uh, for the get queries. We just use this one here with the encode values only, which is also recommended by Strapi. And this way, you can automatically use QS also with your Open API fetch client, which is pretty neat. So looking into page here, we actually will use the client. So what we do here is we use the client to get our pages. So in Strapi, if we have a look, we have a page collection and then with this page collection, uh, we automatically get the pages endpoint. And the page just has a path. That's what we will query the page, the specific page for. And then here we define some components or blocks in a dynamic zone. So that means we want to render a hero section first and then the image text section second. So this is a 
Strapi backend part. And then from that, we just get this uh, pages endpoint. And the cool thing now is we can actually see automatically all the endpoints that we have. So for example, we could also fetch comments, um, but here we want to use pages. And then we have some uh, specifics for the TypeScript client. So we can pass params and here we have the query, which will be resolved by the by the query serializer. So, um, and here we just use the specifics coming from Strapi. So this is how you would add a filter for a query to the Strapi API endpoint. There are some things that are not optimal when the documentation plugin from Strapi generates the open API specs. And then when you generate the TypeScript types from that open API specs, you get some uh, yeah, not ideal typings. So one example is um, if you would um, remove this one, you get a type error because the path is actually typed as a record from string to never. And uh, that's obviously not ideal. So it's not yet perfect, uh, but I'm sure we will get there. But still, it's pretty, pretty powerful, especially if you're concerned that you're just using the basic fetch here. So what we do is we filter for the path um, that we get from our um, yeah, dynamic parameter um, from Next.js. Then we populate all the blocks. Um, and then what we have here is the actual actual data. And then cool thing here again is that we would have the response, of course, typed as well. So this is then going into the blocks renderer. I made a video about the blocks renderer or component renderer earlier. If you're interested, have a look into this. So basically this takes a map which maps the blocks to actual React components and then renders that. So this is how we would use the typed uh, fetch here in this scenario. And then uh, the result is pretty obvious. So we have the page and the components are actually rendered. So that's not a big surprise. So another way how we can use the types that were generated in the context of a headless CMS like Strapi is if we look into the components and here we have our block components and then we have the hero component. And the hero components is actually the React component on the client side that reflects the content hero component on the Strapi backend. So since we have created the schema for this, we can also use the types. That means that we, when we create the hero component, we can just use it as the properties for the component. And that allows us also to more easily um, yeah, handle the component because we can, for example, see what actually we have for uh, properties here. And then if we want to use the title name, um, title color, we could actually uh, yeah, simply do that. Let me see. <coughs> uh, title color equals and then here you, for example, also see something pretty cool because the title color in Strapi in our backend is an enum. We would already have the typing. So it can be black, it can be fuchsia, and it can be white. So let's say we take fuchsia and then we want to have text fuchsia. Take it like this. Um, so that's that's the big benefit of the using the types uh, also from the Strapi backend within your components. So it's not only very nice for the data fetching part, but it's also nice for when you are working and creating the components themselves. Let's look into uh, another thing that is important. As you could see here on the page, what we did is we used a React server component. That means this is a basic fetch on the server side. Um, that also means we don't really need to handle the loading state because it will just wait until the data is there and then it will continue. But it's a different story when we are on the client because as you can see here on the comments, this is a client component that always fetches the data live. And then what you would see here is you have a loading comments um, area which is shown until the uh, request is resolved. And in order to have those things that we need for client-side data fetching, 
what we are using here is React Query. So let's have a look into the comments there here. So this is a, a client component and then we just use use query and then as the query function we would use get comments and get comments we just uh, have a function um, that's just a wrapper around the typed fetch call. So as you can see here we also just use the type fetch and then for the response we can then also use the uh, type definitions though actually we would not really need that because the response would be um, yeah automatically understood by TypeScript because what we return here is the actual data that is coming back from the request and then if we look into the comments for example here what we would see let's say we want to print the um, actual comment here we we fetch the comment the here so we have the data and then we map through the data that we received now we have the comment and then this is also perfectly typed as well and this is the comment that we want to print here so that's how we would also leverage the typed fetch even on the client side by just wrapping it with use query uh, from React Query, which also again is a pretty light wrapper for a um, client side data fetching library, for example, if you compare it with Apollo Client or something, for sure. So I think with that approach, you have really most of the things that you need. Uh, you have type fetch. Um, or, or type data fetching, uh, but you have a very, very minimal payload and stuff is really uncomplicated because it's really just plain fetch that you are using. Uh, there is a little bit of magic involved with the CLI and the generation of the types, but I would argue the setup is not that complicated, but obviously that heavily depends also on the backend that you're using. So maybe you have to write your open API specifications yourself. So that would be obviously a little bit more work, um, but in the context of Strapi, I think it's pretty, pretty nice approach to handle all those things. So that's it. I hope you learned a thing or two or got some inspiration. If that's the case, consider to like the video and then obviously follow because at some point I'm going to hit the 80 subscribers, which is a pretty amazing milestone. Thanks a lot and bye.